Seth, good afternoon. Are you surviving the the blizzard out there? I am. It hasn't quite hit yet, but we are bracing, and I'm going to try to I'm trying to get out of town and head back east for the holidays before uh, I'm digging myself out later this week. So uh, obviously, you are not dealing with that problem, <laughs> and then our our first official yeah. bi coastal episode here. So yeah, how does it how's it feel to be back in the homeland? <laughs> can, can I tell you uh, that across the room here? is where I grew up in my in my bedroom, right? That's the original bedroom, Star Wars sheets and pictures of old surfing heroes and Led Zeppelin, dude, like, uh, but it's all been done over. Like my mom changed it. It's now like Bed Bath & Beyond, like decorated. Well, and To be fair, it's like, it's not like you went off for your first semester to college. Like yeah, it's been a bit, <laughs> it's reasonable that she updates things a bit. Dude, at almost 50, yeah. Like it'd be just creepier like... if she, it was exactly the same. It'd be like a mausoleum. Like did Scott <laughs> yeah. get in a drunk driving accident in high school? Like, no, he's still alive. We just kept his room. That'd be weird. Yeah, dude, it, it's kind of fun to be back. I mean, I'm in my hometown. This is where I grew up. I went to school cool here i got i'm like what would you call a townie you know when uh i went to a bar last night and th there's a big tech firm here and all those dudes are out you know the patagonia vest and there i show up and they're looking at me and they're like okay he's definitely not from the tech firm uh he must be that townie he must be that dude that actually lives here like born and raised well it, i was gonna say of all people it's funny for you to say that as someone who's lived in about a dozen countries at this point so <laughs> give off the towny vibes it's good to know yeah that, dude. That, uh, california doesn't leave the kid even if the kid leaves california yeah yeah for sure man they're just like oh man i grew up here right across the street and i'm giving them stories i used to get i used to skateboard right here and they're just i can see them looking at me but uh but but speaking of like you know times past gone or or things that have gone by the wayside th this topic that we got here I know Seth, it's created a lot of not, I won't say hostility, but a lot of reaction. And the topic is, is rock and roll dead? And let me just say that when you type this into Google, there'll be a ton of articles that really say that, oh, rock's gone. It's for old people. It's like, it's totally out there. It's all hip hop. And I, I can see some of the rationale behind it, but a lot of it, I don't know. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I look forward to chatting about it. I have, for whatever reason, I, I didn't think much about the topic because I've heard this said a million times, but for whatever reason, once I started going and working on my notes, doing a little research and just kind of getting my own thoughts together, it like made me, I don't know why, it, it like frustrated me that this is such a such a thing that people just say flippantly and it's like, it, it in my opinion, it is not well, true, what, but we'll what get into that. For sure. Now, what are the positions? You know, there, there's this comment that rock and roll is dead, but there's people that say, for example, that it's not dead, but maybe it's changed or uh, it's dead and it's a good thing. So what are some of these, you know, kind of figureheads or who, who are these people or what are they saying about this topic? Yeah, in general? I think the presum I think that the, the dominating theory that I've heard slash seen is that like people don't care about rock anymore. They've moved on to hip hop. That's what's being played on the radio. And that means rock as we know it and new creative avenues for rock is gone. It's not happening. It's just not true. But I think that's the big one is, is it's been supplanted by other types of music and rock is somehow dated or uncool. Or like, I think when people think rock, they think classic rock, which is yeah. kind of in a, you know, it's in a vault somewhere. It's, it's, it's done. It's over. Um, and I think rock being, you know, guitar based music, I guess is the right. I mean, Depends on how you want to define it, which I think is yeah. an important piece of the conversation. But I mean, yeah, the rock is for old people. I think the rock is for old people is more like interesting rock hasn't come out in a long time. And the people that were young when that came out is are now old people. So that's like what's tied to that. I think we talked about the idea of other genres being a little more boundary pushing hip hop, R&B, um, you know, uh, electronic, whatever it may be. Yeah. The presumption is that rock is somehow like more inauthentic and these are more raw and innovative. Um, the idea you had put in here, the solo artist is more important. I don't know that that is has much to do with rock per se, because I think there's really innovative solo rock musicians. But those are kind of some of the the things that I've been like reading when we go through, it, yeah. which is the idea It's that the simplest version is it's dead. It's for old people. There's nothing creative. All of the creative, interesting music is coming from other places. Yeah. And as a rock fan, yeah, I took offense to a lot of the statements that I was reading. But when when they define rock and roll, to me, what they're defining is that 
iconic band like the Stones or the Beatles or Zeppelin, where you have this very traditional four piece front man, you know, the, the whole thing. That's how I see what they're reacting to. I don't know if you had that same impression. Yeah, I think even the idea that there are stations, I mentioned this, but like called classic yeah. rock, which kind of places yeah. it in a different time and place. And people compartmentalize that as like, that is all that rock music is, is yeah. the old stuff, like, like let's call it into the 80s, the latest, maybe the early 90s. But by those channels existing and having 50 or 60 years of history of rock music, and that's even to discount like earlier pre Elvis, let's say, yep. which was out there and influential. There's just a big back catalog of it. So it's like, how can you do new things with it? I, the, it there aren't as many new bands that are becoming huge, but even that is not totally true. Yeah. So I, it, it's all this gravitation towards rock is uncool. So we're going to declare it dead. And I don't know that either of those things are just very true. Yeah, I, th- I think so. And some of the notes that I read that that you had listed, for example, about the tours, some of the biggest tours just last year, a, yeah. a lot of them were, were rock bands. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's it depends on, again, it, it's all pedantic, but it's like, it, what what does dead mean? Does it mean that there's not new? Does it mean that yeah. it's not making money? Because we know by definition, that's not true. Just to, in 2021, like you said, um, some of the top 10 grossing tours were Rolling Stones, Weezer, Fallout, Boy, Green Day, kind of triple tour, the Eagles, Guns N' Roses. Now, those are rock bands spanning about 50 or 60 years of rock playing, you know, yep. different times they came through. So you could have said rock was dead in 1980 and then be discounting the third biggest tour of last year. So yeah. there's still people showing up to see rock music. To be fair, a lot of these bands are not incredibly new. But yeah. to me, a dead genre means like people are over it. They're not going to pay their money. These are bands yeah. selling out arenas with yeah. hundreds of the you know hundred plus dollar tickets so that in and of itself should be one point in the column of like rock ain't dead because people are still spending money on yeah now if you compare that with other genres that many people have said have died or 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 have been reduced to a very uh, niche appeal like jazz right jazz is not selling out stadiums uh, at all no one can name like oh dude i'm going to go see this jazz artist and whatnot uh, so that argument that rock has been relegated now to almost a niche i don't see that i don't see that at all if you go just to las vegas you'll see you know here's elton john's show here's all these different acts that as you mentioned that are that are not just big and small venues they're big and big venues um, yeah. and i think some of it too is a desire to call newer rock bands uncool, even if they mm-hmm. are popular and not dead. Like, yeah. I'm just going to throw, here's a handful of bands from the past 10, out, 15 dude. years. Like, I want to hear We've it. got Arctic Monkeys. We've got The Killers. We've got Tame Impala, Imagine Dragons, Greta Van Fleet. Yep. I, I'm not asking for your opinion on the quality <laughs> of their music, but I am, I am asking an admission that, like, these are bands that are selling out yep. arenas, stadiums in some cases, that are newer bands that are globally popular, that are playing guitar-based rock music. And there's a lot of them. I think there's a little bit less of a, this is a super like journalist word, but there's less of a a monoculture around music. So where everybody's watching the Beatles on Ed Sullivan or everybody cares about these three bands. But I think, especially with the internet, with smaller venues, DIY stuff popping up, there's more bands than ever playing more tours than ever with more people showing up to see them across more cities globally than there ever has been. They're just many many more of them and there's not like five that everybody knows and access to learning about them if you've got a specific taste in music you can go find that band via algorithm or via message board or otherwise and so to me it's just the the pie is both getting bigger and the there's more slices is maybe yeah that's what i'd say it's an illusion that it's actually dying it's just there's a lot of other stuff and it's meshing in a way you're having all these different influences coming in so you could even say hey the beatles were rock in 1964 to to 67 and then they became different we called it art rock right or progressive rock or there was hard rock or folk rock technically you could have said that traditional rock is dead you know so i I think to me as i look at i'm like oh maybe this is just media looking for something to get attention but it's just evolved 
I think that's 100% what it is. And if you want to start yeah. splitting hairs on like subgenres, sure. Yeah. There's again, it's this idea of I keep coming back to this monocultural, just like rock and roll music. Yeah. But it really hasn't been. You could argue that, you know, the the Black Sabbath, we call them rock now, but you might call them like metal back in the day. So they're, they yeah. don't count as rock or like when yeah. you start doing that, you apply that backwards to other bands. And it's like, okay, there's apparently no rock bands because they all fall yeah. in different categories. Yeah. And, um, Bands that are popular now, like I said, I would say the music that a lot of the music that Coldplay does yeah. would be considered rock music if it came out 40 years ago because there just wasn't a subgenre to slip it into. So if we're yeah. casting that wide net, there's a lot of bands that are doing something that we would have called rock not too long ago. Yeah, to Maybe me, I think it's just a matter of semantics. Now, I will say, though, that when you look at the traditional kind of four piece, let's like Led Zeppelin or the who, where, as you mentioned, it was such fewer channels, fewer areas of distribution, fewer tours that everyone kind of knew these people, right? You knew Pete Townsend, you knew Mick Jagger. Uh, to me, it does to like, it's hard for me to name a huge traditional rock band that is new where people have that. Everyone kind of knows the four members. Yeah. Per se. I'm going to, but I, I, that's fair. And I, but I think yeah. that's also like a marketing MTV yeah. is less prominent. Yeah. Uh, top 40. I think a, a point I meant to make earlier is if you turn yeah. on whatever the top 40 radio is in your town, you probably would kind of think rock is dead, but that's yeah. like incredibly reductive And the universe of music is so much bigger than it used to be. So yeah. the people saying that are either doing it to push buttons mm -hmm. or they are, have a very, very small understanding of the universe yeah. of music in my opinion. So, but but why then are there so many articles that are touting that rock is dead and it's a good thing or it's been relegated? It's it's just this niche thing or there are nostalgic bands like Greta Van Fleet that is a Led Zeppelin kind of rip off or there was Oasis yeah. which was a Beatles. Uh, you know what, what's driving that? I think it's a, I truly think it's like a desire to be defiant. And it's something about this mm -hmm. clickbait thing where like, it's, it, it's, it makes you stop in your tracks and be like, wait, rock music is dead. And I think you can present kind of a straw man argument that you hear less of it, but I just think that's wrong. I think even mm -hmm. a lot of top 40 music that isn't maybe officially rock is hugely influenced by rock and has yep. elements of it. I just think that, that like, the ecosystem of music is has blended together in such a yeah. way where everything is rock and nothing is rock. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. it, it could be, or, or it could be considered that. And so it's, it's silly to just be like cut off a line in 1985. You're like, they just, they don't make it like this anymore. There's no, there's no <laughs> rock music. It's just, it's just false. It's just wrong. Well, so. what did they, one of the things I, I did read about those that said that rock is dead and here's why some of the reasons were that it was formulaic. It wasn't innovative. It got stagnant. And at the same time, hip hop was a little more raw. It was from the streets. It was more transparent. It's much more innovative. And hence, that's why you, and, and it, it it is true when you go and you look on, you know, top 40 or, or just look at the playlists of, of the top uh, bands out there, they're very hip hop influenced. Yeah. And I think th that's true, but I, yeah. I think that's like that genre crossing we're talking about, but I think bands who are more rock leaning who have gotten more creative deserve credit yeah. for pushing that genre forward yeah the songs yeah. aren't all like three chords and a drummer and that's it it's like yeah all right well we have more access to music we yeah. need to get creative because a lot of things have been done but i think all that does is push rock centric artists to do more creative things it yeah. doesn't mean they disappear they evolve and so maybe that's yeah. the best way to say it is rock as we know it has evolved since the 70s but like it should have you know that that is yeah well that should be you, without saying exactly you could have looked at the mid 70s with traditional rock bands in the stadium with zeppelin and the who and then you have punk rock and they could have easily labeled that this is the death of rock and now this is punk and punk is not rock right yep. that, that would have been an easy way to kind of uh rationalize what was happening in the marketplace same thing with hair metal coming along it's like yeah. this is ridiculous yeah. and ostentatious rock is dead they're killing it and yep. then grunge came along and then yeah like you know that was like if you don't think nirvana's rock then like i don't know what to tell you you know what i mean like it's yeah so you start going through these arguments and you present things to people and like well no that's not what i mean and, and it's you go you could talk yourself in circles i i 
the influence of hip hop, the importance of hip hop and the prominence of hip hop have, it's almost like there's, there's a new horse in the race, but it doesn't mean yeah. the old horse goes away. And yeah. I think that's the important piece. Uh, and I think one thing people don't realize is how much hip hop has borrowed from rock. Totally. I mean, totally. Oh, Whether samples, it's sampling. Yeah. yeah. So, so if we look at, I mean, but I think this is an interesting, maybe it's just kind of a, a indulgent debate, but the last rock star, the last great rock band, the la- and, and that's kind of traditional definitions because it has changed. And if you look back, uh, it, it's harder to break out. It's harder to be a Beatles, right? It couldn't really happen now. Uh, what do you think as you look back is kind of this last great rock star, rock band? Yeah, I, I was thinking about this and just being like, that is obviously so subjective, but it's sort of like who would yeah. be a person that is undeniably a rock star that is, you know, that anybody would say by any yeah. definition, this is the person. And the one I came up with in my head was Jack White. Um, okay. Lead, you know, lead singer, of White Stripes, a lot of yeah. solo stuff, a lot of side projects. But this is a guy who's come in playing straight, kind of almost like garage rocky kind of music, but is yeah. widely regarded as a, um, a, you know, a, a freak on the guitar, an incredible player, yeah. can play anything has been around for a decent amount of time, but really came to prominence in the early 2000s, um, kind of out of nothing. And everybody knows who Jack White is. Everybody knows what he looks like. So like there are, there's less of these guys, but they're still coming out. I would argue Brandon Flowers from the Killers is that guy. He's a rock star. Have you ever seen him play an arena show? Like that's a rock star. Yeah. Um, You know, artists like you two still going strong. Uh, so it just depends on how tight you want to keep that definition. But I think there's, you know, bands like Queen of the Stone Age. Those are straightforward rock bands that if they went yep. on tour, would still be selling out mid to large size arenas in every city in America. So yeah. what what did you have for that one, Scott? I had, to me, at the same with that definition, what defines a rock star. This is someone globally known as a rock star. And it's Kurt Cobain. And I even look at Nirvana as the last great like in that tradition of global bands that are undeniably rock, you know, and even we're talking about grunge versus, you know, the old school seventies rock. That's who, who I thought was uh, just the last great. Now I got to tell you when I saw the strokes and a lot of my buddies, another great right? example. Yeah. A lot of my buddies that are, you know, in the same age as I am, same generation really liked the strokes. And, you know, maybe they don't listen to modern mu- or music, you know, after 2010 and whatnot, uh, but they like that one. And they're like, yeah, no, that's a that was a good rock band. That's the last, you know, good rock star, uh, whoever that guy. They didn't even know his name, but they they can sense that this was a band that could have been in the 70s or 80s. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's actually a really good example. And it, it just like just when you think a scene is dead, yeah. all of a sudden, like 10 bands come out of nowhere that all maybe yeah. kind of are influenced by each other, like. A t- you know f- eight or ten years after the strokes you had vampire weekend come out of new york yeah. like is that band a rock band i would say it is a lot of hip-hop yeah. influence a lot of like global music influence but that's a rock band um yeah so that i just to me the more you start dialing in what does that mean yeah and what's the cutoff line you to me you keep finding bands that emerged long after rock was dead so that's and the part I, of that I and i think it was at that time when if you had to say hey describe a rock star you know you may describe mick jag or elton john kind of someone flamboyant this front man and i think that's what um people are kind of looking to that this attitude and that's why i think even guys like liam gallagher of oasis or julian casablanca of the strokes like they had this cigarette beer like i don't care this over the top personality and i think there was such it was kind of defined in that era when rock became a big business in the 70s you know stadiums and whatnot that that's they were almost like paying tribute to that however in in their contemporaries were a lot of them were moving beyond that a lot of people looked at oasis as like a tribute band or like yeah. dude, those guys are a throwback you know throwing tvs out the window that type of almost um cliche like you're, you're you're cosplaying as a rock star right yeah yeah it, it's cliche it's like oh you're acting as a rock star but in fact the, the rock stars now don't look anything like they used to and that's a good thing right uh yeah. in some way you know there's there's progress and just one almost not counterpoint but one additional thought to what you said is like you mentioned elton john if elton john had had both by his look and his music somehow been dropped into the 
the type of critical universe that we have today, not drop his music yeah. into 2022, but the way we're really splitting hairs. I don't know yeah. that you'd call that guy a rock star. He plays piano ballads. He dresses yeah. very flamboyantly. Like that's not a rock star, but in my mind, yeah. you would say he's from the heyday of rock music. So it's kind yeah. of like, you, you, you know what I mean? We're, we're kind of, in order to make this argument successful, you have to go through a lot of revisionist history yeah. in your own brain to justify it. And yeah. I just want to point that piece out because it's like so... Yeah, uh, it's, it, it, it's not what I believe. It's yeah. just kind of saying like it to me, it's all semantics. You're like, like, as I think John Lennon was talking to um, David Bowie about the glam movement and, and and with John Lennon's famous ability to kind of put things in a very folk uh, mindset. He said, oh, yeah, it's just rock with lipstick. And, yeah. and, you know, and I thought that was a very uh, interesting insight to describe this like here's the new movement, the glam and all that, but it's the same energy just in different forms and different looks and aesthetics, but it's rock. You could say that about Tame and Paul and all the bands that you mentioned, you're like, you could even call it something before that's rhythm and blues or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's expression uh, with this kind of colorful palette now. Yeah. Completely. Actually, that's a really good way to say it. And w- whether it's a colorful palette and how it's presented yeah. or in the music or in the instrumentation that's being used to me, it's like, the the pool is just getting bigger and the creativity is getting stronger. And once you sort of acknowledge that piece, you can realize that all this music is broadly rock. It's just, I mean, think of like, this is, we've talked about it before yeah. on the show, but when the Beatles and the Stones are doing their initial music, there was no like back catalog of influences to work off yeah. of. Now you've yeah. got 50 or 60 years of music having yeah. evolved in that being just another input into what people are creating now. So I think it's, it's evolved with the times in the same way that, you know, everything has evolved with the times, yeah. with the internet. No, no. All that stuff, so. Well, what, let me ask you this question. What band have you seen as of late that reminded you of this kind of classic rock, uh, but doing it in a, in a much more innovative way? Yeah. Um, the one I, I feel like I've mentioned them a few times on the show, yeah. but I think it's a good example here is the Australian band gang of youths. That's yeah. a five piece guitar rock but they've also got you know keyboard they break they've got a violin player that tours with them yeah. sometimes like they're bringing in these different influences and sounds but there's no question this is a band built to play to the back row of an arena and yeah. in certain parts of the world those are the venues that they're playing and so i just that every time a band like that comes along it's like and it's they're often unfairly like not them specifically but those bands are like are they the next springsteen are they the next yeah. this that and so it's yeah. always trying to like make these analogs of what do they yeah. remind you most of when in fact it's just it's an evolution of what already existed in a really cool, cool, creative, healthy way. Not always like the next blank. They're the first them, you know? Yeah. Well, I'd say one for me that you introduced me to on our famous ride from Milwaukee to Chicago way back when is Greta Van Fleet, who... Yeah. I you were I think you were really excited to show me them because you knew I was a, a, obviously a huge Rush and Zeppelin fan. I at first I struggled with that because I was like, oh, this is a tribute band. There's nothing really interesting. But I thought it was. I think they did bring their own flavor, and I think it's you could obviously put that to comparison. They're just a ripoff, but I thought yeah. that was really cool, uh, modern way with a with a different energy. I thought, yeah. I know Robert Plant does not like them, but I think <laughs> I think it's uh, the thing that's interesting about them uh, is how young they are. Like to yeah. to clearly have an influence from the seventies, but literally was born in like two thousand. Yeah. Um, they've they've cut a fascinating track, and they are pretty divisive. But but they're they're selling a lot of records, and they're selling a lot of concert tickets. So yeah, I, it, like it's... I just from a business perspective, and and the argument is Rock Dead. Whatever you think about it, the band, like I said. People, even on this podcast, we joke about yeah. Imagine Dragons and Ex-Ambassadors, but like yeah. those are rock bands that are selling, that that people care about, right? And then maybe we don't, and maybe they're different than the bands that people used to, you know, traditional rock fans would care about, but they are clearly influential and they are clearly lucrative. So to me, they're, the, the proof is in the pudding sort of with those kind of artists. And we're not talking to just about like, you know, Roll, uh, Elton John, Rolling Stones, appealing to the 56 year olds, 70 year olds, even yeah. Metallica and whatnot. These are they're appealing to a younger generation. Um, I think, and if I, I think there were some things that I saw 
in my observation, uh, when my nephews and nieces that are in their 18, 19, they're really fascinated uh, when I'll play them, I'll show them a vinyl record and I'll show them some music. I mean, I can see them appreciating because they see some of the, like with our, our my cousin, little Chris, or you know, uh, when he found out that Steely Dan samples were in Kanye, which you know now is almost old hip hop, uh, I think that was when I saw this blend of like, yeah, they're actually appreciating like rock. The art isn't dead. It's not like oh, that's bad music or that's uh, I don't I can't relate to those songs. I actually like them, and you'll see it on even on TikTok videos. They'll sample so many rock songs that are just getting millions and millions of views, uh, and given and exposing kind of younger audiences to kind of like saying hey man the sound you have now is actually based on this yes it all comes from somewhere and it's just reinterpretation of good art yeah. and i think yeah. reinterpretation uh reinvention and that's kind of like the whole name of the game right the most the artists that have had the most staying power the ones who are able to evolve and so it's no surprise that the genres they're in have evolved yeah. as well right so Exactly. So Seth, what would your be headline, right? You're, you're working for spin magazine. Someone gives you an article. It says rock is dead. What would you revise that to? Oh, I, I <laughs> want to come up with something snappy, but it's like, you know, God, uh, I mean, it's got to fit in that with, you know, of the newspaper, yeah. the, the magazine it's like, rock isn't dead. It just grew up A rock isn't dead. It just got creative. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I actually think it's in a more interesting, healthy place than it's ever been. It just yeah. might sound a little different than the classic rock station that every town in America has. Yeah. I would even put it like hip hop is rock or yeah. what you're listening to is rock and roll. And that or definition you, of- You could almost say, here's even a better headline, like music genre is dead. Yeah. Right? Like oh, that's everything interesting. is- Yeah. Like, you know, hip hop gets played on pop stations. Pop gets yeah. played, like to me, that that melding of things or that mixing of things, that's yeah. the story. That- yeah. that music is becoming not everything sounds like everything else but everything is influenced by everything else in a way that it yeah. didn't before it was very compartmentalized yeah. and so yeah. i would say musical genre is dead yeah it's not like the, it's not like this like. it's not like the salad bowl effect you know where they call that where each retains it is truly a blend so it's hard to extract it's hard to go like oh that piece is a rock that piece is a bit of r&b that piece is that it's a whole new creation with just like you know blending um and, and, and I mean, that's, that is the, that's really fascinating. I mean, that's, that's interesting. I think like, that's where it should go. Right. You don't, you don't want to know what it is in a way. Totally. And it, I, I just think it's, again, it's a result of a lot of different things, but most of all, it's the result of artists realizing that things are getting stale and they need to push the boundaries and they need to get outside of their yep. comfort zones or the, of the comfort yep. zone of their genre. And now that yep. there's like, you're not worried about album sales as yep. well much because that's not yeah. driving you know paychecks yeah. and you don't have to worry about radio play as much you can kind of have your own path i think that actually allows for a lot more creative freedom and leeway than yeah. bands may have had 20 years ago so maybe this melding would have happened earlier if the ingredients to the soup were there for it you know but it's just yeah. now that we've got all these things all happening at the same time it's almost like adapt or die and yeah. that's happening in music too exactly Last question for you, Seth. What artist do you think represents, best represents this blend of all genres that we, we got going on now? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Uh, you want me to start on mine? Yeah, start someone from my first. Someone from my neck of the woods here. I thought 1996 Odele album from Beck. Yeah, great was, example. Was just an amazing blend of hip hop rhymes, folk, rock, experimental like prog rock uh I, I think that's why it did so well but it was just so fascinating almost ahead of its time yeah, and i think no, that I, you could almost use that as a paragon of like man this is where stuff is heading you don't know what it is you don't even know what to call it yeah i i love that example because i think he's a you know people didn't quite know what to make of beck when yeah. when he was coming out they're like this is a white kid <laughs> is he doing hip-hop is he just be is he is it like a bit but it actually, I mean, he won the Grammy for best album like three years ago. So he yeah. can has continued to evolve it and sort of gone from this oddity in music to kind of an elder statesman. I mean, he pops up in documentaries, yeah. he'll do tributes. Like he he's kind of in that Dave Grohl for sure. level oh, of no. I'm just kind of <laughs> omnipresent. Um, Much yeah. cooler than Dave, too. Yeah. So, but it, oh, man, I'm trying to think of it. That was such a good example. 
Um, I'll come back to just, it's not quite as good, but I'll come back to Arctic Monkeys, which you were talking about earlier. Yeah. That's a band who really was just like a straightforward of their time of 2005 or whatever it was, like a few chords, barely knew how to play their instruments, very strokes adjacent. Um, And they have, again, I think brought in a little bit of hip hop influence. Like they've got albums that sound like lounge music. They continue to evolve, but they continue to keep it within the lanes of what their fans love about them. Yep. So I think that's it's being able to pull in those different pieces and output something that still sounds uniquely like the band that people love. And yeah. so, um, but yeah, you you got me beat with the Beck example. No, I man, I think it's one. all, I mean, well, I, yeah. I think what you would see as you look over the decades of music, you'll see these pivotal um, genre bending. I don't know what you would call it, but that they didn't know how to actually label it. Even like Sgt. Pepper's, you know, is it art? Is it music? There's classical music. There's these different rhyme schemes. Even Radiohead that brought in like, you know, I think that's where the industry is like, one. oh, it's it's a genius. It, it's creating this new land, if you will. And I think that's where people got to realize like, hey, man, that's rock, but it's not. But who cares? You know, music yeah. is evolving. And so I think, you know, it's just this kind of media headline. To yeah. Cool and in the moment, people don't know what to do. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. looking back, of course, Sergeant Pepper's rock. And so I'm sure yeah. we'll have that same feeling about a lot of things that people are challenging today. For sure, bro. Well, listen, hey, uh, just want to say thank you to everyone and uh, everyone be safe there on, on the travels. Seth, be safe uh, getting to the airport, buddy, in this blizzard. And, I will. Uh, I was going to say, uh, glad we were able to do kind of a music-centric one and not go too hard <laughs> into the Christmas episode. But if people are interested, we did a Christmas episode last year that was actually very fun and still very salient. So if you're in a holiday mood uh we've got we've got plenty of content for you and if you want to stick with what we traditionally do hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as well oh yeah and and <laughs> seth we had fun on that list buddy and for those that listened back then those songs are still out there look for king diamond look for yeah. jose feliciano they need to keep getting those uh they need to keep getting those uh those <laughs> yearly those yearly paychecks from their christmas songs so the, go go that... listen and go buy go stream <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Seth, man, Merry Christmas, buddy. Happy holidays. And everyone out there, man, have a, have a safe holiday season. And uh, we'll see you soon. You as well. Go surf, Scott. All right. Jealous. See you guys. Right. I'll be at the beach. Perfect.